Hi, how you doing? Welcome back. Okay, so in the last part, obviously, we uh, kind of messed around with this, did a little bit of rendering in 3ds Max and all that kind of good stuff. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this little beauty here and put it into um, Keyshot, and we're going to obviously show you how to make some pretty renders with that. Now if you've never used Keyshot before, you can get to it by just going to, and I shall show you, dum -ti -dum -ti -dum -ti -dum -ti -dum. give me a minute. There's a 14 day trial for Keyshot. It's a very powerful tool. It used to be bunk speed, but now it's Keyshot, obviously. Um, I believe there's a $100 option. And, I mean, I can render multi, 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 you know, million poly objects in this without it killing itself or dying. So, let's go over to Keyshot just to show you. Just in case you're confused by technology, there it is. So there's Keyshot here. So obviously you want to go to Downloads and try it out. If you go to Buy Now, as you can see, it's sodding expensive if you're not a student. But if you are a student, just click on Educational and you can get the Keyshot 2 for Educational. $95. Not too expensive at all, and it's a fantastic tool. Okay, Really, really good. It'll make you some real pretty renders. Okay, so anyway, what I've done is, <coughs> just to explain again, I've taken my model here, below, and parts of it I've selected, so for example, the screw heads, and I applied a white material to them, and these parts, and the knob lids, and things like this. There's only about four different materials here. It's nothing complicated, okay? If I open up my uh, material editor, you can see, these are the three materials I've applied on top of the default material that actually came with it. Right, close that down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to export my entire model, okay, and I'm going to call it Minigun. Well, I'll call it Minigun 2 because I've already got one Minigun exported. <coughs> I'm going to export it as a film box file, FBX. So, I'm just going to use its kind of default here. We can have different presets, but I'm just going to use the standard default here. It'll tell me about some turned export, turned edges and some material export failed. <coughs> it's because it can't export max materials into itself. Don't worry about it. Now all I'm going to do is go down here and click Keyshot. I'm going to wait a moment for it to uh, start up. There we go. Okay, now obviously you remember it took us a while in 3ds Max to do our rendering and stuff. In Keyshot it's going to be a lot faster. So let me just close down Max. That way we can use all of Keyshot's resources. Okay, here we are, and it'll render as large as the window we drag out is, which is kind of cool. Okay, now I'm going to click the import button. This normally takes about a minute. What's nice about this is it's just immediate results as well, because it's real-time rendering. It's like, bam, there it is. Okay, so I'm not going to merge with current scene because I don't need to. Um, I'm just going to keep it as it is. Click OK. Now give it a moment or two while my computer crunches away in the background. It's going to import the geometry and then load it into Keyshot and it's going to do a default grey material render for everything because it, because it can't import these materials it's just going to stick its first default material on. However, because we've separated out the materials anyway it's still going to be able to actually do this. And there we go, there's our minigun. And you'll notice that it's rendering out beautifully already. What I'm doing is I'm using my middle mouse button just to pan and zoom. Alt and left and mouse button just to kind of look around my model. There we go, and we can see it's working absolutely fine. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit and just apply some materials. So if I go here to my material window, you'll see here's all the different materials we've got. I'm just going to resize it a little bit. And I'm going to go down to metals, and here we can see gunmetal. That's what we want. Shift, left click, shift, right click. And there we go, it's applied the material for me. I'll do it again here. And in that one, because I'm not sure why it's separate. Okay, so that's the basic gun material here. I'm going to apply it to the barrels too. Now, down here, I'm going to apply silver to these parts. and those parts, which are just like control screws and things, remember? Um, let me see, and maybe some sort of cast steel, hmm, polished steel, 
polished steel horizontal that I'm going to apply to these screws, screw heads or whatever you want to call them. Okay, and pull back. Now the good thing is that obviously I can change all the materials that I put on this. I mean, it may not be obvious to you, but it's obvious to me anyway. And now I'm going to make it obvious to you. So for example, the barrels here may not be as shiny as the main body. So double click on that. This will bring up the metal I just applied. Maybe I want to make the metal a little bit rougher. Just to show that it's slightly more hard wearing, kind of brushed kind of metal. And I can change it from being completely black to being like, you know, not quite as black or even more black if I so wanted to. Just to show that it's made perhaps from a different metal or a different process. If I go down here, we can check on, here's all our little screw heads, you'll see the way it's reflecting and everything. It's nice that. What we can do is we can move the light in our scene as well if we want to. I think I'm kind of happy with how everything is to be honest. But if I hold down control and click in the background, I can move my actual background environment map, which is affecting my image obviously. And that will change the way that it's rendering out. Now bear in mind I didn't bother really going and subdividing the crap out of this model to make it smooth. What I could have done is thrown a couple more iterations on it and then, you know, it would have uh, been a lot smoother when it came to render time. But really, for this, it's not a good idea simply because I'm recording. So let's get some nice bad boy renders of this, okay? So for example, all I have to do now is I wait until this is finished processing, like so, and then all I have to do is click screenshot. There, that's my render done. It says in the bottom right hand corner, it's saved my screenshot. Fantastic, no effort there. Maybe I want to get a picture around the other side now. Now you may notice that that's odd, that's picked up the colour from those little uh, parts on the other side. Never mind, we can temporarily apply same materials we have here onto it. So if I just left click on the bar barrel while holding shift and then shift right click onto here, I can just stick that gunmetal material onto it straight off. There we go. And now that it's finished rendering, I can just click screenshot and away it goes. Let's turn it around some more. There's the back of our piece. Let's zoom in a bit. So I'm just mousing in and uh, just let it keep on going until it gets rid of the jaggies and fixes the anti-aliasing and stuff and you know we can grab another screenshot this is all I'm doing to make you know the promo pictures for this set to be honest but it's working thing is when we get close up obviously we can see that this thing is <coughs> um, not that high a polygon model it's only you know a sub 100,000 polys but from a distance like this it looks absolutely fine. Now if we go into options we can do another couple of things as well. So let's go into environment here. We can uh, turn off ground shadows which will make it look more like it's kind of hovering which is useful if you want to get pictures of the underneath and so on. I prefer ground shadows simply because it shows us what's going on better. I can also make the ground slightly reflective if I want which is always useful because it allows us to see things going on underneath. Now I could drag in, like I say, an environment, but I really don't want to. I really like the kind of plain white bright look that we've got going on here. So let's have a look. An another thing we can do perhaps just to really sell the model as it were. Okay, so I'm just holding down the middle mouse button and moving this. There we are. If I go into my options again and click under camera, Perhaps I could uh, use a depth as field. So, don't want the grid on actually. If I click enable and then choose pick focus, pick the part of this that I want to be my point of my focus. And as you see, it will now work out everything automatically. I can still adjust my focal distance and my f stops and so on. There we go. But now, obviously, it's rendering it with full depth of field locked onto this, which is cool as hell. Let's just let it render for a couple of minutes. I mean, it's a lot, qu it's a lot easier than mashing the render button on this. And when we've decided that we've had enough, again, 
screenshot. And then perhaps we want to focus entirely on this area. Watch. Give it a moment just to recalculate its focal points. There we go. And now it's focused on the back rather than the front. This was really created, I think, for automotive visualization and things like that. Uh, but there's no reason that you can't use it for your own models for just about anything if you're trying to present your work in as good a light as possible. OK, I'm going to turn off my depth of field now. Well, once I've got a screenshot anyway. There we are. Remember, I can change my environment and all the other things here and use different backplates if I want. And I can also change my real-time settings. I can have more or less ray bounces and turn on detailed indirect illumination or ground indirect illumination or any number of other features. Very, very simply, as you can see. I think I've still left the uh, depth of field on. I'll just turn that off. There we are. OK, and of course we've got the options here for rendering our actual proper model here. And we can stick a turntable if we want to. So here we go. There's our turntable option. We can actually choose the number of frames for our turntable. Say maybe, I don't know, 200 frames. Our begin angle and our render angle. And it'll automatically render our turntable for us, which is really, really cool. And again, you can choose all the various options that you want for this. Plus, of course, you can choose alpha and render it out as images and all sorts of other funky things. So, that's how you take your model that you've just created using the tutorial and you render it out in a kick-ass way and then impress the hell out of all your friends with the new 3D Palace Minigun 2.0 tutorial. So, I really hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. And uh, it's been a bit of a fun day for me. And it kind of brought back some good old memories of when I had that massively bad throat and I made the first ever one. And now I haven't got a bad throat, I've just got a voice that's all messed up from making tutorials all day. So, in the words of Bob Ross, goodbye my friends, see you next time and God bless. Bye bye for now.